Can China compete at Cannes? Now this is thoughtful. Hello, I'm Trevor Lai in Shanghai. Chinese art is breaking world records at auction houses, but the global ad industry isn't hearing much about creativity in China. Why not? The biggest names in the industry will weigh in right here, and PT Black with a thought or two on how to get more out of your creative talent. But first, JWT's North Asia CEO Tom Dockeroff is here to talk with us about China's creative culture. Tom, the market has money, demand, and talent. Why aren't agencies here dominating global awards? Boy, that's a very direct question that you're asking right now. I, I think that um, th th there are structural and cultural barriers that keep China from really pushing its weight on the global stage in terms of creative expression. Some of it is due to the, the fact that a lot of the creative that Chinese people are uh, warm to is not necessarily accessible to foreign judges. But there are cultural and corporate structural barriers which inhibit China's rise on the creative scene. I think it's fair to say that if you were to ask me about the quality of creative on average and now versus 10 years ago or 13 years ago when I first came, there has been incremental progress. Much more of the work is competent, and you see fewer of the shocking, basso profundo, monotonous, uh, looped commercials that you used to see that were strictly awareness generating. But still, there hasn't been an inflection point. There hasn't been a breakthrough. There hasn't been a corporate ethos that has celebrated creative breakthrough as a viable business tool. And with the rise of Weibo and other digital media, do you see the emphasis being spreading over now into other forms of advertising, so that they will take more risks in other platforms? Well, I think that again, Chinese. Companies are adventurous when they can afford to be. The idea that Chinese people are not capable of being creative is a red herring. It's a canard. The fact is, is that Chinese people, despite the fact that they are raised in relatively conservative environment and they're hierarchical, and they do have a logical approach to life, they're also highly conceptual, highly associative. So once you're able to create all right, an environment where people feel safe enough to express themselves. Then you do have genuine creative expression, which is global standards by any stretch of the imagination. But getting into Weibo and getting into the new digital media, these are again relatively risk-averse platforms where engagement is one-on-one. -on -one. The the expenditure, the out of cost in terms of what it costs to actually produce something and buy the media is is、uh, not as risky. So you are starting to see whether you're talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken and some of their young characters, the、uh, the Be Happy Band, whether you're talking about some of the digital work that's done on sites like DTC of Love World. These are all world standard stuff. The Chinese are highly lateral thinkers, and they're waiting for the platforms to safely enable them to express themselves. Weibo or、uh, most blogs or digital、uh, media, they're anonymous. So the, the key point is that people feel safe enough to express the creativity that they already do have. You don't have a basic, fundamental, raw creative talent now. The problem is, is that Weibo, digital, it's not exactly、uh, something that builds a bridge to conventional structure and conventional expression of creative in a corporate setting. So that's what the real challenge is. How can we encourage our clients to embrace creativity? How can we encourage, in a corporate setting within an advertising agency, which, despite its relative、uh, individualism or individualistic orientation, is hierarchical? And so, the real challenge that we have is to make sure that, on the client side and on the agency side, that we're creating the structures that are. Appropriate for stimulating people to release their creativity, as opposed to develop their creativity. Well, for local companies that you've dealt with over the past thirteen years, do you find that there is a greater appreciation for good creative now than there was a decade ago? Ten years ago, we got no revenue from local companies. Now, about forty-five percent of our revenue is from local big Chinese companies and medium-sized companies. So, obviously, there is progress. How do you guys, as agencies, find and target and keep the best talent? Ultimately, what the agency needs is leaders, and there we have a desert. There are relatively few 
local people above the age of 35 that say deep down in their heart, you know what? I'm comfortable being a master of advertising. I'm comfortable and proud, okay, to be able to articulate the abstract and represent the development of the industry because it's too abstract. Having been here for such a long period of time, what are some of the biggest myths about marketing and advertising in China that some of your own clients perhaps had as perceptions when they first entered the market or first engaged you as agencies? I think that the big barrier so much is not myths because people are aware of the, the hurdles, but simply the cost of developing brands here. And the fact that you can't be, it's sort of a vicious circle. In order to be successful, you need to have scale. It needed to, in order to have scale, you need to invest a lot of money. So the way through that is what most uh, companies face as challenge. But in, in terms of myth, I could go through you know, hard rules of how to advertise here and, and the way that people have learned uh, to be smart over time. But in general, you're seeing much wider eyes here, much sharper minds. Tom, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. And now, a thought or two from PT Black about how to get more juice from your creative team. China right now is obsessed with the topic of creativity. Developers are building creativity parks around the country. It looks like any other corporate compound, although maybe there's some extra brick or loft-like design elements. So what's going on? Well, it's important to remember, we're talking about creative industries. And in China, the industry comes before the creative. What does that mean? It means we're not talking about pure self-expression or unadulterated exploration. We're talking about jobs and industries that make money and they work with commerce. So when we talk about the challenges of the creative industry in China, we have to look not just at the creative side, but at the industry side. We have to look at the structures and procedures in place to get great creative work. And that ultimately boils down to leadership. What are agency leaders doing to encourage great creative work? Are they rewarding and finding great talent internally? At the same time, are they teaching top young people in China reaching out and saying, being a creative director is as viable a path as being a business director or a sales director? Are they protecting their creative people from the whims of clients and other companies so they can hold their head high? Yes, the client is not always right. In fact, some of China's most successful creatives are fiercely protective of their teams, fiercely protective of their procedures. And therein lies the secret. Great creative work comes from a successful balance between creativity and industry. In China, that balance is not yet stable. It's dynamic. So yes, it's frustrating. But at the same time, there's a great opportunity here for people who can get the best out and who can create a working balance. And who knows? At the end of this, maybe we'll all get our tattoo tax rebates after all. Thanks, PT. With me now is Linda Kovorek, Coke's former Chief Creative Officer in Asia, Victor Ring, BCD at DDB Shanghai, and Norman Tan, Lowe's ECD for China. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Norman, where would you rank China among the world's top ad markets in terms of creative work? In terms of uh, ranking for China, in my opinion, it's not that important right now. Uh, definitely not the top 10 yet, but uh, China been winning awards every year and catch it up very fast. Where do you look to find good creative talent today in China? Well, I think the, the key thing about finding good creative talent is to really assess what you're looking for for each different role. Generally, as, as a sort of a guiding principle, I look for three things. Talent, passion, and the willingness to work hard, almost in that order. Word of mouth remains, uh, to me, the most reliable way of finding good creative talent. That's the best thing about this business. If you're any good, we'll track you down. The right place for the right talent is very important. That's form a culture. And the creative leader and, and company leader in the office have the same vision of make the agency, the creative agency, uh, the, the vision to make that, to create a culture is as important as they will return. Very often, I lost some talent. Two years later, they come back to us because they found this is a better place to work. Mm. Yeah. And Linda, looking at this from a client's perspective, great creative ads can sometimes be risky. Do you think that agencies in China 
are willing to take risks right now? Agencies or clients? Both. Agencies definitely want to take risks, and to be honest with you too, clients want to take risks. But I think risks are like an investment. You want to make sure that you're investing that's going to, in a way that you're going to get a return. And so I think the agency, their role is to help us feel, to help the client feel like risk is diminished. Therefore, I always tell the agencies, sell, don't present. And a lot of time when work is, is put in front of us, it's just pre it's merely presented, it's not sold. Chinese see, uh, they're traders at heart, they're salesmen, they believe in buying and selling. So give me a persuasive argument why I should buy it, done. And I, I just don't think there's enough persuasive arguments around. Chinese are no less or more risky than, than Westerners. They just need to have a very persuasive argument put in front of them. Uh, you bring forward case studies. This is, you just sell in a, in a way that makes people buy into what you're saying, that's all. Not enough of it done. Well, I'd be interested to hear, you know, Victor, in your experience, have you seen cases where perhaps the Chinese clients do exhibit a bit more of a conservative approach to these types of uh, creative ads? I think there is, there is a tendency for clients to remain kind of, let's wait and see what the market responds to. Let's see what our main competitor is doing. And I think that's prevalent across different markets, not just China. If we really kind of get the confidence of the client in the agency and in the work that we present, usually we form a very strong partnership and the common goal becomes creating a great piece of communication. And that's what ultimately as an agency we should strive for. I would say that uh, would the agency take risks or the client take risks? I think as a working partner, they take risks together. Hmm. Then uh, the most successful campaign always done with a strong partnership between agency and the client. And, and Linda, from the client's perspective, what is one of the biggest mistakes that you saw from agencies presenting work to you? And in which case they thought they were doing a great job selling and presenting their work, but in fact there was a gap in terms of how you were perceiving their work. I think it comes down to proper due diligence, and it goes back to what I was saying about selling versus presenting. Really put together an argument that helps us um, come along with you on the ride and understand the story. Where, where are you drawing this idea from? I think that that's really important for clients to hear. One thing I find lacking right now is fundamentals, both with the agency and with the client, that everybody has kind of leapt ahead very, very quickly. It's like playing basketball as a starting center without really having gone to basketball camp. And you can shoot a basket, but maybe not with the right form. And, and you see that a lot, where you know no one's gone to ad school necessarily. You don't. I'm not talking about a, a you know four-year degree in marketing. I'm talking about the fundamentals of advertising, where you know how to write a brief, you know what drives great advertising, both the client and the agency. Because right. more often than not, they don't. And that, that's a big problem. So when you're judging the work, you're all over the place. When you're writing the work, you're all over the place. Let's turn the conversation around. What can the West learn from China in terms of creativity? Well, I think creatively, it's it, within our industry, I'll be very kind of brutal. Are there lessons that West can learn right now? There are many, many lessons, as, as you said, Armin, definitely. But within the realm right now, I don't think so, and I'll tell you why. I was looking at all the integrated awards from Cannes, because there are some brilliant ones, the Yellow Pages stuff from New Zealand, um, The Greatest Job in the World, Queensland Tourism, uh, Burger King, uh, US, great stuff. To me, it's all about you know the integrated awards that, for me, are the most important ones. Not one of them was Chinese. Um, and that's, we all look to these guys for our case studies. So in that realm, no. Linda, Victor, Norman, thank you so much for joining us on Thoughtful China. Thank you. That wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe to us on Tudo and YouTube. And you can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter.